Hi, YouTube and the world. I'm sorry I have not been posting a lot of uh, episodes of Daichin's Daily Dharma lately. Um, at first, I was really happy about every episode, and I just loved it, and I posted all the time. And then I started to get worried about the quality level, and then I began to post less often. And then I kind of would stop posting, you know, and... Um, so here we are back with Daichin's Daily Dharma. Thank you for those of you who have kept up with the show, uh, recommended it to friends. Please hit the subscribe button and uh, the like button if you can. And I would really appreciate that. Today's episode is about depletion and essence and burnout. I don't know how long I'm going to ramble on. So at any point, if it gets boring, uh, you can just, you know, go back to one of the older, more fun episodes. Um, burnout, right? Being a high volume service provider means that uh, you have to manage your own energy uh, while still maintaining a high quality of service. And in a way, um, service is a art form uh, in terms of the techniques of service, in terms of um, being efficient with one's energy, providing what's called the essential service, right? What, what is the essential service? What are the layers of service that you can take away? When you take away all the extra layers of service, what is the true essence of the service without which it would no longer be that service? And so in some ways, depletion and burnout, which come with a high volume service provider, especially in many of the uh, business formats of yoga, um, teachers wind up teaching, um, you know, more than 10 classes a week. Um, uh, massage practitioners are giving, you know, many massages per day. And... Um, there's not only the physical stress and the physical strain of you know, leaning on bodies, giving massage with the hands, you know, um, uh, the, there's also the emotional uh, fatigue, right? Being in um, a responsible position. I don't like to say power position um, in yoga and massage. Uh, but being in a responsible position where, you know, people have come to feel better, people have come to resolve health issues, people have come to exercise. Um, and uh, in many cases, when a practitioner starts to get burned out, um, depleted, and this depletion can take several forms. Again, there's physical depletion. Uh, comes from doing lots of hours and not having enough restoration and care for oneself. There's, of course, the emotional depletion, uh, again, of, of giving a lot of care, giving a lot of touch without receiving so much. Um, and, of course, there's the uh, economic and social depletion, which can come in certain settings of caregiving, uh, particularly yoga, um, as uh, yoga has a lot of um, uh, mixed paradigms, a lot of clashing objectives, right? Some people are into yoga for spiritual purpose, some are into it for uh, physical purpose, some are into it for therapy, uh, or instead of th uh, some type of therapy. And obviously, for yoga to exist in um, secular capitalism, right, there is uh, economic issues involved with yoga. Um, and of course, massage as well, um, you know, tends to be um, a little bit more clear in its boundaries than, than yoga in its what's called scope of practice. Um, but anyway, uh, the more depleted uh, one gets, this is seen as a bad thing, right? Because the practitioner must be strong. The practitioner must be clear. The practitioner must be healthy. The practitioner must be happy. It starts to get even more. The practitioner must be giving. The practitioner must be, and then, in, you know, yoga must be enlightened, must be a guru, must be uh, always uh, perfect. Um, 
And however, many of those things are outside the scope of practice, right? They are layers of service or salesmanship that are beyond the scope of, of practice. So the other way to look at it, though, and I'm, I'm giving this massage this today. You see I have my space already set up there. I have my blankets, and I have lots of yoga props here. Um, I'm just resting, basically, myself before I give a treatment. <clears throat> I just taught a yoga class. And the more... Uh, tired we are, in a way we start to give less and less of the extra layers of service, right? The, the layers of salesmanship and, um, I don't know, hospitality, right? And we're just giving the service. And in a way, this actually refines the quality of service, to give as little as possible and yet achieve the same result, right? To make the modality as streamlined as possible, to make it what's called essential, right? To get to the essence of the modality, the point at which if there was anything less, it would no longer be that modality but the point at which everything other than the modality has, in fact, fallen away. And in some respects, it's almost impossible to uh, achieve this essential level of modality without burnout, without having all the ego depleted, all the pride, all the um, arrogance, you know, um, which even in a very humble field like massage or in being a yoga service provider, uh, we, we want to, you know, do our best all the time and give, give, give. And yet uh, a reciprocal modality, a modality that has recipro reciprocity, right, that is balanced, um, there is this um, exchange of energy. And so, yeah, that's just some, some putting this discussion out there. I'd love to get some feedback from my fellow yoga teachers and my fellow massage practitioners. Um, how do you see burnout? How do you recognize signs of burnout? How do you practice and continue to provide service when you are tired and depleted? Um, do you see that as an opportunity to refine your modality? to find the essential quality of the modality. And to me, I always improve my modality every time I practice. Uh, every massage I give, I have become a better service provider. Every yoga class I teach, I have become a better yoga teacher by the end of that class. This, in a way, is the progress or the true value that the service provider derives from the experience, which is experience. There is no substitute for experience. Experience is what the clients and students and recipients of service recognize instinctually as value. Education and skill and talent are wonderful, and yet sometimes they can um, attempt to bypass the experience of a long-term practitioner. And yes, freshness, you know, a new practitioner who is fresh to the field, who's hands have not touched tens of thousands of bodies who are still exploring, still learning. Um, there's something good and appealing to that type of practitioner as well. But there is something so powerful about experience. And we need to value experience not only within the field of providing service. And those of you who are high volume service providers, you know what I'm talking about. 
you know that the more you serve, the more essential your service becomes. And it's not that it is effortless, but that the effort is no longer the um, priority, right? But, but the essence of the modality. What is the least amount of treatment I can create the maximum result with? There, there certainly does come a point where modality and, and putting effort is oversaturation, right? There's also a point at which certain types of clients and certain types of managers of holistic uh, businesses, they see the hospitality and the other layers of salesmanship as more important than the quality of service, that the service be essential, that the service have experience behind it. And, uh, you know, I, I do understand these practical concerns. And uh, in every setting, you have to, um, you know, go by the, the standards and the scope of practice of, of the setting. What I'm talking about and what I'm interested in hearing some feedback from you uh, out there in the world, uh, and if you can share this video, if you have friends who are service providers, if, if you could just get a discussion going about the essence of a modality, what are the layers that fall away um, and how does that make you more effective? How does that make you more and more and more and more and more effective with your modality? How do you get to the essence of your modality? In some ways, depletion, right? The kind of running of energy, burning out all your energy and then seeing what's left. You know, this is in some ways one of the techniques of modality. Right? To, to see what is left when everything you think you're supposed to do is, and have is gone. And yet you keep going. With, with, with what energy do you, deeper reserves of energy, can you never discover when the other layers on top, the hospitality, the business sense, the salesmanship, um, when you drop all that stuff, and get real. What have you discovered? And then, you know, that uh, stays with you even on good days when you have lots of energy and, you know, um, we, we don't want to be depleted all the time. We don't be burned out all the time. We don't want to um, get into a habit of it or feel like there's no other way to reach the essence. There probably are other ways and I'm just very interested in the discussion about that. So thank you so much. I hope this talk is coherent. Uh, it does a little bit jump around. Please hit like and subscribe. Um, make some comments below. What is modality to you? What is essential modality? What is burnout to you? What are the extra layers of uh, salesmanship and um, hospitality? that are, of course, important aspects of service. But at what point do those aspects become uh, more important than the quality of service? And, uh, you know, are there issues in certain yoga schools where managers of schools, they, they prefer uh, service providers who um, are experts in hospitality and salesmanship more than they uh, prefer uh, service providers who uh, are authentically evolving the form itself. And of course, customers, you know, uh, clients have a right to expect a certain level of cordiality. Um, but then at what point does that um, turn into managing the moods of a service provider and demanding that service providers always be perky, happy, uh, uncomplicated people uh, who are just, you know, um, was called the tabula rasa, you know, the blank slate. So a lot of questions. Um, this is a Dachin's Daily Dharma, episode two, season two. It's really more of a question, question than an answer. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm asking questions. Thank you so much. Again, have a beautiful day. 
please get a massage once a week. There's a lot of service providers, massage providers who, who need more work and need more opportunities to practice. And um, massage should really be a daily, a weekly part of life. Everyone should get a massage every week. Uh, the world would be a better place. Healthcare costs would go down. Um, and um, other modalities would also flourish, such as acupuncture and yoga. And uh, I'm, so I'm making a, you know, an appeal from my YouTube page, Dachin's Daily Dharma, here at the Moscow Nim Yoga School. Uh, I'm about to give a massage. Thank you so much for tuning in.